Hi everyone. Uh, I wanted to make a short video um, for people who are stuck at home, can't go to class and still want to do something with sword fighting in the coming couple of weeks. And uh, for today's video, what I wanted to talk about was footwork when attacking um, and specifically why, we, why I don't teach the lunge when doing longsword. Um, just for reference, I'm going to work on three different types of footwork. The lunge, the simple step and the passing step. And what I mean by that is a lunge is any sort of forward footwork where the back foot remains behind. So, for instance, with the rape here, uh, when making an attack is you extend the arm forward and then as your torso moves forward, the front foot comes off the uh, floor, but the back foot remains where it is. So that gives you a nice platform to launch attacks from and to retreat from again. Long sword. I believe there's roughly two different kinds of footwork. There's a simple step where, again, when making an attack, the front foot comes forward as well, but the back foot follows it, and you end up in more or less the same position that you were in, except slightly more forward. There's also the passing step, where the back foot completely passes the forward foot as you're doing any kind of action, in this case, for instance, an attack. Now, I believe that the lunge is reserved for parry repost type systems, for instance with the rapier, where the idea is roughly sort of based on a your turn, my turn type of system, where one attacks, you retreat, and parry any sort of repost that comes back. So therefore, it's okay to keep your back foot where it is, because you're supposed to come forward and retreat quite often. I do not believe that this is the idea behind longsword fencing, at least the kind of longsword fencing that I do, early type of German longsword fencing. In that case, the idea is that you start out of distance, move into distance with a threat like an attack, and then continue that threat from that distance until a hit is made, or until, yeah, either of you is hit, really. So, in that case, there's no real sort of attack and parry repost system. You attack and you continue that attack until a hit is made. Now, that's why I don't do lunges in longsword, but now for some examples of how simple steps and passing steps can be used in longsword. So, the simplest version of using just a basic simple step is with a thrust from plow, for instance. We've done this one many times. But one good example of this is simply extend the arm forward, step forward with the front foot, and follow up with the back foot. Again, extension forward, follow up with the step, back foot follows, so you maintain that stable, centralized base. With a passing step, one alternative for that would be you're in your right high hanger or ox, and as you switch sides, or a thrust, or any sort of winding action, you need to follow that up with a step in order to maintain balance. Same thing with a strike. I start on my left side, and I strike towards my right side, and in order to maintain balance and stable, I need to take a step, a passing step, to get in the proper position again. Now, one other thing to really pay attention to when doing either simple steps or passing steps is to not overextend. A lot of people, they do regular simple steps and passing steps, but they do try to close the same distance as with a lunge, which is arguably a lot further. So, when they do that, for instance, with a passing step, they leap into the attack to try to get as much distance out of it as possible. But that makes it a lot more difficult to recover quickly enough so that you can either do a follow-up attack or parry any sort of counter that comes your way. That's why I advocate, both in simple steps and passing steps, to make them 
short and measured and balanced always. So that way you can maintain an attack without having to recover an imbalance because you were overextended. Now, an example of being able to recover from an, uh, uh, being able to continue an attack after making an initial attack and using that simple balanced footwork is for example, you make your initial thrust, you take a simple step forward and then because for instance that thrust is parried to the side, now you're easily able to continue that attack with a passing step and observe. One other example is, again, you're in your plow and now this time you thrust up into an ox to catch an incoming attack. That is parried again and now you maintain one to the other side and step forward to follow up. But in all of these cases, simple attack or compound attack, you maintain proper balance, measured footwork, do not overextend, and no lunges, for the reasons given earlier. So, if you want to practice this, you can do this simply without a weapon, just simple steps forward, simple steps forward, simple steps back, simple steps forward, passing steps forward, passing steps back, any sort of combination that you're comfortable with, maintain your hips center over your balance point, your shoulders over your hips, and just practice the footwork. If you want to combine that with a long sword, that's fine. If you don't have a long sword at home, you can just use any sort of stick, broom handle, what have you, doesn't really matter. And just practice these combinations. Simple attack, passing attack, passing attack with a strike, and simple attack combined with a passing attack, or a simple attack combined with a passing attack and thrust. Try these out and see how they feel for you. If you like this video, let me know and I'll try to make some more. Thanks very much.